So what's up guys, your boy Tube here and we are back here with another video. This is kind of a how to play slash showcase of the guys Sals and Rajan. The banner released roughly two days ago, so I'm a bit late to the party. I should have made it to you earlier, but I just didn't have the time, so I'm doing it now. So we're gonna go through the Tomb Raider Tube infographic. I'll leave the website down in the description below. So yeah, we're gonna go through Saz's infographic first, then Rajan's. So yeah, and then I'll give my thoughts on whether you should free for free or not. Because, you know, obviously that's what I'm trying to say. So we're going through Saz first. Saz is a range attacker slash support. He has the sphere slots A, C, and D, and is a gun wielding user. He has red crystal, and yeah, that's pretty much what bases are Saz. So we're going to go through his skills and what they do and how he functions. So... First build is called AIM, it's a 4 hit rate HP attack, 170% overflow which is guaranteed to hit. This means if he has something like evasion or blind, he, he just doesn't care, he just going to hit anyways. When an enemy is debuffed, he has the access to AIM+, plus, which is he gains Brave based on 30% max Brave before the 4 hit rate HP attack and it has more overflow. If he uses AIM on debuff a target, as you can see below, it's he gains of attack and defense up. Which is very nice. So second skill is called attack boost. It is but he batches the party based on his attack and delivers a free upgrade HP attack, which doesn't add up to the turn count. He grants allies max brave up, attack up, a crit hit rate up, as you can see below, and he grants himself a speed up. After he uses his attack boost, he gains access to brave and HP plus, which brave plus is two hit brave attack that is guaranteed to hit. Standard and target will be inflicted with attack and defense down like just like usual. HP plus is pretty much the exact same thing and just and also he inflicts the debuff attack and defense down. The, his EX ability called Cold Blood is a 12 hit AOE brave HP attack followed by a 4 hit AOE brave HP attack 120% overflow with split damage and like his other skills they're it's a guaranteed hit. He grants himself the overhead icon called the Chocobo Chick Fever, which I'll get into when we get into statuses and buffs. Sorry, the Chocobo Fever just increases. Sorry, I actually go through it now. The Chocobo Fever just increases his buff. The buffs he grants duration plus two turns. He increases party's critical hit damage, his attack and max brave, and the overflow, which is pretty much it. I'll, you'll see it when I go down the infographic. So 0 hour free for the EX is Cold Blood now becomes 150% overflow, inflicts AoE speed sorry, inflicts AoE speed down and tremendous potency increase. 1 hour free increases his attack max break by 40% standard. 2 hour free is when the quest starts, he grants the party 8 turns max brave attack and crit hit rate up and himself speed up and the Chocobo Chick Fever uh, icon. And free for free, his EX now changes from 12 to 4 hits to 7 hit AoE HP, another 7 hit AoE HP, and a 6 hit AoE HP. With 200% overflow and again another potency increase. His sphere, when you free for free him, is a party attack plus 5% for 6 turns after a critical hit, which is very good. It's a DSOS sphere. So after looking at that, do I think. What's the minimum for Saz? The minimum for Saz is free for free. You really want to get the. Better HP done on his EX, and you want to start with the Chocobo Chick Fever and all the buffs. It's like at this stage, any character has to be free for free. So his C65 is called Advance All. It's party damage, sorry, overflow plus 10%, and it extends to five turns. And then C70 is party attack 20%, which is very nice. So look, look now, his status is now, as you can see, the Chocobo Chick Fever buff is a attack of 40% max brave to himself. The buffs he grants is extended by two turns. Now this does not involve his buff extension. This just involves his normal buffs that he grants. So he doesn't like he doesn't buff extend the entire party's buffs by three turns. Just his buffs. He also increases party attack max brave 5% critical damage Damage 50% and Brave Damage Overflow 20% Stolen Overflow of course His 
His debuff is 20% of the attack, speed, defense, speed. They're not the most potent, but they obviously give you the access to aim plus. His generic buffs, he grants at himself the part, sorry, he grants the party 70 attack, 60% max wave, and 100% critical hit rate, and grants himself defense and speed up, which is very nice. The noteworthy passive is, like I said, when he extends party's buffs when granting himself a buff. So, on total, his party buffs and auras, as you can see under debuffs, is 75% attack, 75% max brave, eye brave 10%, critical hit rate 100%, critical damage 50%, and damage overflow 20%. So, going through all Asaz's kits, do I think... So, what are the, his positives? His positives are... This guy is pretty much an offensive unit's best friend. He is, hands down, the best offensive support in this game. He's literally second to none. His buffs are ridiculously potent, and his the ability to increase crit damage is phenomenal. He also for extends buffs, which adds a lot more value to him, which is insane. The ability to extend buffs is vastly underrated, in my opinion, because it almost extends the character's longevity, almost being the key word. And to do that is just ridiculous. Like, we saw with Hope that he could extend buffs, which is just which really warranted his value up a lot. His crit hit rate up and crit damage up almost makes it seem like your party is guaranteed to hit 999s, which is amazing. And yeah, everything about his EX, his cost line is also ridiculously high. As you can see, he has 12 9 skills. Aim has 12 uses, 9 attack possess 9, indicated by the number in between, which is just... 21 skills and his ex is slightly fast like what that's amazing and yeah because his chocolate chick is not a buff it's an icon it, it can't be dispelled which is really good like honestly this guy is just fantastic as an offensive support he's also very fast because he has ridiculously good turret as well like there's nothing there's very few things i can say bad about sars the only bad thing about Saz is his buffs. He takes up three buff slots, which is just never a good thing. Any buff, uh, sub, you, buff uh, support has this issue. Athmal, Hope, whatever. They all have this issue of taking up buff slots, which is annoying. Well, his issue is his buffs are so potent that you don't really want to push them off because, what, 100% crit rate up, 70% attack, and max brave like you really don't want to push that off which makes it annoying and also he's he has very high turn rate which can maybe not be that great in my opinion it's not that's not really an issue i actually like having high turn rate so he can just go more times but yeah that's really it Saws is just fantastic as a support unit like i cannot say like oh he's terrible no i can't he's so good it's not even funny like honestly the only really thing i would say is to bring a battery because saz's attack boost battery isn't the best it's not that great and he doesn't heal so you probably need to bring a healer as well he's just he's just so good like the ability to extend buffs is it just it shoots up his value a bot ton with all these offensive buffs. Like, I cannot say not... I cannot say very few things bad about Saz. He's that good. So, since we're done with Saz, we're going to go to Rajin in just a sec. And we're back here with the guy Rajin. Rajin is a, is a spear-wielding user who has yellow crystal and is an imperial enchant melee healer utility bot with a ADE sphere slots. So like Saz, we're just gonna go through everything, what he does, his abilities, everything. So his first skill is called Fist, it is a five hit brave HP attack, 170% overflow. When he's in thunder mode, he gains Fist Plus, which pretty much like Saz's his aim, he gains brave, then deals a five hit thunder elemental brave HP attack with 200% overflow, which is very nice. His Rajan special is a four hit brave to HP attack, with a hundred sorry, yeah, with a hundred thirty percent overflow, fifty percent splash. When he's in plus version, sorry, he gains the plus version from Thunder Stance, which is a four hit AOE 
brave to STHP attack this time. And 160% overflow, still 50% splash. He grants himself max brave up and he enters thunder stance. Thunder stance is just like, if you'll see it, it's just like a thunder ore around his body. It's, yeah, it's just like that. When he's in thunder stance, he gains brave plus, which is a free of brave attack. And when... He, he also gains HP plus, which is a two hit brave HP attack, one twenty percent overflow. But you do have to have the EF plus free for free for this. When he uses fist, he grants a parry physical attack up. And when he uses Martin special, it's max brave up and thunder mode to himself, which is very nice. His EX called Rajin pulverizer, which is a six hit brave HP attack, one twenty percent overflow, and he grants himself the thunder peel buff, and he enters thunder stance. Thunder Peel is just a lightning enchant or for the party and HP regen. As you can see, with and it's a stackable buff. As you can see, with Thunder Peel free active, when it's at free stacks, it changes his HP plus lightning discharge, which is a free hit AoE, break hit AoE HP attack, split damage, and resets the stack count to one and inflicts paralysis on all targets with 120% overflow. So zero for free on his EX, it, it increased the overflow of his EX, and now does 50% splash and inflicts thunder resist down to all targets with a potency increase. One hour free is actually one of the better one hour free. It is a party attack max spray 40% aura, which is fantastic. Two hour free is when the quest stats he grants party a physical attack up and himself max spray up 40%, and he also ends thunder stance. And also fully charges his EX so he can just pop off his Thunder Peel buff to and enchant the party. When it's free for free, he locks HP plus, like I said, and Lightning Discharge plus. His EX now becomes 8 hit and 100% splash, which is very nice. His Sphere is a physical attack 15% for 6 turns when breaking or attacking broken target, which is also very nice as well. So now we're going to look at his sta statuses. Sorry guys, one sec. Okay, and we're back, and we're just going to look at the statuses now. So his frame buff Thunder Peel is pretty much he attack max brave up ten percent for per stack, and chance party with Thunder and grants HP regen based on twenty percent max HP. And every to gain a stack, you just need <laughs> to do an action, i.e. C sixty five skill one, skill two, EX, Raven HP attack, except for Lightning Discharge, which is the AOE paralysis. His generic boss he grants to the party is physical attack up and he grants himself max brave up 50% for 6 turns. His debuffs are thunder resist down the paralysis. And his auras, everything including together are physical attack up 35%, attack up 70% to the party, max brave up 50% to the party. HP regen 20% max HP and thunder enchant as well. What do I think of Rajan? I actually like Rajan's kit a lot, despite what other people have said. I find him very fun to use. His utility is excellent. His the thunder he just makes the, your units hit far more harder than used to. He's excellent. He's just his AOE process is so helpful in so many situations. It just gives you breathing room. His it has HP regen, so you don't really necessarily need to bring like a burst healer or something like that, which is very handy. He just he does a lot for the party. He just have one glaring weakness and that is his speed. I won't lie to you guys, Rajin is slow. Like really like it is he is very noticeably slow. But I don't really mind that to be honest. It's not the worst thing. To be honest, it is it is very noticeable and it is kind of annoying. And you might have to sometimes spam skills because his skills do have good turn rate. Which is annoying, and he doesn't actually have any battery either, but that's not really that much of an issue. Also, a good thing about Rajin is his EX is actually really fast. It's like one skill rotation to EX, which I find ridiculously good. And he obviously starts off with, so it's recast is just even faster, which I find very nice. So yeah, honestly, I love Rajin's kit. Some people don't like him because he's slow, but it's it's very fix it's very fixable. 
So yeah, I do like Rajan. He just he offers so much utility to the party. It's not even a joke. He makes your party hit that much harder. Like I cannot say, oh, don't Rajan sucks. No, he's actually very fuck flipping good. Like he's not even like honestly. So after all this, do I think you should pull on the spanner? Honestly, if you haven't pulled on the spanner yet, go ahead and pull on your banner. If you have 50 tickets, 20 tickets, throw anything at the spanner. Even getting one of these EXs is so valuable, it's not even a joke. This banner is probably the best banner we've gotten, we're going to get in fact, till probably the new difficulty hits. And that's not even a joke, this banner has that much value. You have two fantastically good supports that are easily viable for the next difficulty as well. Their kits are so loaded with utility and they offer so much different stuff. Salazar offers ridiculous crit damage and crit rate up. Rajan offers his AoE, Paralysis, Thunder and Parent, Thunder Enchant and Auras. Like, I cannot say anything. I cannot say not to pull on this banner. I wouldn't even suggest skipping this. I can't suggest skip this banner. I can't because it's that good and that worth of value to me like and now obviously with obviously that being said if you want to skip that is perfectly fine i would definitely not recommend skipping because the banner just has that much value so now that we've gone through the kits we're going to do the gameplay showcase which will be back in one sec And we're back guys and we're going to, we have Saz and Rajan and Alphano here. We're going to do the Alphano Lost Chapter Chaos Fight. Now I know you're wondering, why aren't you bringing these guys to Alex Chaos? This is where they're super synergy, that's what they're revolved around. And to be honest guys, I can't be bothered doing Alex Chaos. It is just that tedious. So we're bringing them to a different Chaos Fight. That's weird. Uh, yeah, so we have the boy Rajan over here. So for spheres, uh, Rajan's sphere is actually really good for himself, but I would save it for someone else. Uh, I would tend to use weakness spheres because he does hit for weakness damage like 100% of the time. Uh, gold bases is fine, other weakness spheres, anything to do with his max brave, I would probably say, because this, this guy hits hard, like he doesn't really need more attack, but you can focus on attack, because his max brave is quite low, uh, also debuff spheres work as well, like Zidane's and x that that's up here, sorry, where's x that sphere, yeah, debuff, because he does debuff, Paralysis and Thunder Resist Down, which is very good. That will help him a lot as well. Uh, Lulu's is decent. I wouldn't use Lulu's on C. Uh, Precious is actually very good for Rajin, Max Brave, and Attack. So, yeah, anything to do with weak, anything that's very easy to proc. So, like weakness, debuffs, that's what you should really go for. For D slot, I give him Sages because it's dealing critical hit and Raj in 99% of the time is going to deal a critical hit. He can use mo most of these. I wouldn't really give him Freya Sphere because it's not really worth it. Rocka Sphere just does not work for him at all or Aphmau Sphere. But the, vast, the rest of them, and I wouldn't also give because Ramza also has Eye Brave on his and Max Brave, but I would definitely give... Um, what you call it? I, I would definitely not give him Ramzas. I would give him um, anything aside from Waka, Athmal, and Ramzas and Freyas. I would give to Rajan. And E, I, t you can use Emperor's Fear. Emperor's Fear is also really good. I would tend to go for anything that can inflict speed down if you're going to go for a debuff because he is slow. Like there's no going around that. So anything to help compensate that issue would be very good. You can go for stats up like Yuffie's, like uh, Seymour's, like El Narcissus as well. Or uh, anything that can, you can actually go for Max Brave as well because the Max Brave is actually on the low side. Then we got Sazes, 
I went for Hope Sphere because it's just granting a buff, which Saws pretty much is going to do 99% of the time. And Poem Sphere, which is a healing sphere, which is actually very good. It just makes him more well rounded. You could go for something like Pinello Sphere or Arcella Sphere would work as well. Oh, and Alphamo Sphere is actually perfect for Saws because it has to do with granting buffs. So for D, Saw is actually one of the few people that can actually handle Walker Sphere because he has five busts himself, which is very good. I wouldn't like like uh, Rajan. I wouldn't give him Aphmaus or Ramza Sphere or Freya Sphere because I just don't think they're like you want the optimal for him. Anything else is fine because the majority of these are max brave and attack. So for A slots, I think Kane Sphere is <coughs> really good for him. It's range attack 15%, which is very good. I would go for, like Rajin anything for debuff spheres, which is perfect because he also debuffs. So yeah, I would go ranged debuff spheres. Uh, Gilgamesh Sphere is also very good. And also I would go for anything with critical damage dealing a critical hit because this guy is guaranteed to deal critical hits like there's no going around that so terrace is fine sobbins is fine anything that has to do with debuff or critical hits i would definitely recommend for his a slot sphere which is very good so yeah Uh, Firefax, I went, they're not optimal, like, he wants attack 108, max brave, or buffed attack, I kind of like the buffed attack, because it helps with his max, his S2 battery, which I don't find to be the best, So now we're going to Rajin's artifacts. I forgot about those. I want 108 Max Brave or 108 C50. I do think 108 Speed Buff is also a good alternative too because, like I said, this guy is slow. So you do have to definitely do want to speed him up that small bit. I mean, it's really up to you. I definitely do think these are optimal uh, passives. They're not perfect, but, you know, they do the job, which is fine. I also don't have any... Uh, character boards for Saws, so he's not going to be like what full strength. So, yeah, we're doing the Elf in the Lost chapter. Um, we're just going to bring a Keith friend. Oh, we're probably not going to need Keith friend, anyways. Uh, so yeah, we're going to bring Alphano, Saz, and Rajin, and let's get into it. Brush Shiva summon just to help Rajin speed out because, like I said, this guy is slow. So let's get into it. Let's hope the frames are okay because. Jeez, all right, one sec, we're going to wait for this wording to clear up because every time I hate, every time my frames just drop because of all these words everywhere. Okay, let's hope. Jeez, uh, look at all these words, man. Alright, so the Star Wars credits have gone. Wow, we just finished them off. Then we use. Shining Obsidian.
Now we start doing weakness damage. Okay, so we got through that. And then we're going to... Are we fifth with Rajan to get our turn ready? Oh, this is the X. And this house just does so many hits. Jesus. There's some moonstone. Energy train. Now we use HP Cross Stars. And now we have Lightning Discharge available, so we just use this. As you can see, he can't even take his turn. Oh no, he's immune to process. I forgot about that. So now we use Alphamon Alf ZX. Shining. Then we go on to the second wave. That's all they don't jump like a Brazilian turned. I think we can actually break them with stars. Let's see if we can. Oh yeah, they are ranges this film, so forgot about that. Almost, which is nice. <laughs> Rajin did not care at all. He was just he just went crazy. Jesus. Yo, like you can see the damage increase with these two on the team. Like, they are not struggling to do damage. As she starts just breaks. Then we use cold blood. 
As you can see, he just shoots so many bullets. I think we have the extra off now. Almost. I think they're going to buff themselves again. The watch and paralyze is done. If you hear any background noises, my apologies. Very HP plus for size, and we should have off and on ZX. Oh god, the background noises. Jeez, I don't know. Like, the more, the more, the more damage, the more, more damage we're doing because of these guys. As you can see, Sauce. I don't. I uh, kind of underestimate Sauce's S1 battery, to be honest. Then Rajin does his EX. Then slaps on the Thunder and Peril. You see Alpha Note capped on sick, which actually is the low the Then they use guard resonance. So now I think we can break them with Rajan. Okay, one's broken. As you can see, even with the break damage reduction, the crit, uh, the crit damage, and the imperil is just so strong. It just bypasses everything. It, even with Salas, is like, <laughs> like this is just amazing. The fact I can still do that much damage and break them down even with their brave damage reduction is amazing and then I'm gonna get off the attack As you can see, size again. Hmm. Yeah, why not? Now we keep shooting, shooting, shooting like Jesus. These two together are actually destructive. The, the hopefully we won't take that much. Okay, we didn't take ridiculously large amounts of damage. Luckily, Rajan can actually shoot us down with his EX. Go. 
think I can shoot this on Rajan with his S2. Rajan just never used his skills because he doesn't go that much, which I just love. His longevity is ridiculous. Sauce so just jumps so much. I think he has the X but uh yeah, he has the X. I'll just use Gon Summon. Then you just use the cobalt. Like he just shoots and shoots and shoots. And Lightning Discharge actually deals a decent amount of damage as well. Like look at Alpha Nose Max Brave with all these ores on him. I know he's synergy, but Jesus. Like, I've been spamming so many skills with Saz, and he still has this much skills left. It's actually a joke how high his cost line is. And then, another skill, back to EX, and he just jumps. And the Rajan as well just keeps getting the X. Like, they deal lots of damage. Like, I cannot say anything else. And Saz is going to shoot him again. So then, we just, like, honestly, these guys are actually just so powerful. Like, you might think Saz is all oh, 3 1 skills, but with the amount of spamming I've been doing this round, like, it's actually amazing. He still can just continue. Like, he still has 4 skills left. Like, look. Like, look how amazing that is. Gets to dress lower, and Alpha Nome can finish this with his EX. <laughs> and then that's game. So that is the Saws and Rajan showcase. Honestly, these guys are actually so fun to use, especially Saws. <laughs> actually, even both. I'm not even going to say Saws. Both Saws and Rajan are fun to use. They offer a ton of offensive utility and other things like Saz with his buff extension like honestly these guys you should not be skipping this banner even picking up one is enough like these guys are way too good to skip and these guys are easily viable for the next difficulty which is what I'm going to be talking about in my next video so that has been the Saz and Roger showcase I'll see you guys later this has been your boy Tubes and yeah um bye